Vigilant Christian Mario, and you're here for another edition of Satanic Illuminati Christmas Pagan Holiday Exposed. In today's video, we're going to be exposing Satan Claus, also known as Santa Claus. If you're just tuning into this video series, I'm going to leave a link for the introductory video in the description section below. Satanic Illuminati Christmas Holiday Exposed. Now, you need to get up to speed. The Illuminati, the Synagogue of Satan, has been modifying the calendar in order to place their pagan holidays on it so that the world ignorantly and blindly will participate in their occult rituals, holidays, and traditions. So, Christmas is no different. It is, in fact, another just satanic uh, pagan holiday that masquerades itself as a Christian holiday holiday. In the introductory video, we looked at what a Christmas tree truly is. It's a idol for pagan worship back in the day that now people just ignorantly bring into their home without having the slightest idea where this tradition actually comes from. Uh, also, uh, here he is good old Satan Claus with his demon elves. Uh, as you're going to see here in a little bit, this is where elves originate from because Satan Claus is demonic and he has his little demonic helpers to help him out and we as believers need to be crucifying Christmas so we're going to do that today here by just watching Jim Staley's truth or tradition uh, should Christians celebrate Christmas or Easter I'm going to play the Christmas part now I do not support Jim Staley his ministry or theology but I do support what he says in this little clip here. There is some truth here, it's some very good research, but I just want to point that out. I do not theologically support his views, but right here he says some really good stuff that uh, everyone should be made aware of. So let's go and check out where this Satan clause comes from. So does this sound familiar? Let's move to this character called Odin, because this is where we're going to get into a little bit more detail of, of our holiday is where some of these symbols come from. Along with the celebration of the sun gods, the Scandinavians also worship this god called Odin. He was the god of intoxicating drink, ecstasy, as well as the god of death. And because of the Feast of Saturnalia dealing with all those things, he naturally became uh, the most popular god of the Feast of Saturnalia, uh, which was a sun god, which we can trace all the way back to Baal himself. Guess who this character became. Look at him very carefully. What does he look like? The colors are wrong, but this guy became Santa Claus. That's right. Odin, or Woden, was the god of wisdom, magic, and occult knowledge, runes, poetry, and war. His name meant the inspired one. And you're going to begin to see, as we move through these slides, you're going to, to see that, uh, that Santa Claus, or Odin, is awfully familiar to Jesus, or Yeshua, which means salvation. We're going to see a god, Odin, who saves, and we're going to see another one called Yeshua who saves. Now, I want you to pay attention to some of the characteristics as we go through Odin, because it's shocking to see the similarities and how Satan is trying to masquerade as an angel of light, as we know from the scriptures. He was a tall, old man that had a long white beard and carried a spear or a crozier. Remember when we went through the crozier, the serpent crozier. Whoever holds a serpent crozier is connected to the power behind that serpent crozier, which is the serpent himself. Let's continue. He traveled around the world on a white horse that had eight legs, okay, which was an ancient uh, tradition, the number of transportation. This is where the eight reindeer came from. Now you might say, Jim, there's nine. Originally, there was eight. Rudolph was added in modern times. There was eight reindeer, and it comes from that white horse that Odin traveled around on that had the eight legs. You can look up all of this stuff as very a common knowledge on the internet and in encyclopedias. You can see Odin and, and all the reference material that goes with it. And virtually every version of Claus, he carried along behind him a dark helper. These became the elves, okay? So virtually every single version of Claus, there was a dark helper. If you look carefully in that picture, you can see that kind of little demon guy with the long uh, red tongue that comes out of him. These were called Krampuses. Uh, the Krampus or the dark helpers followed along 
and if the children weren't good, they would beat the children, okay? And so you had the good guy, St. Nicholas, who eventually would become St. Nicholas, the Odin, who would come and he would give you gifts if you were good, and if you weren't, then the, uh, the blackjacks or the dark helpers, they would be the ones that would institute uh, the discipline uh, to the children, and we're going to see that. So these Krampuses, which ended up being Santa's helps, uh, excuse me, Santa's elves, according to legend, the Krampus accompanies St. Nicholas during the Christmas season, warning and punishing the bad children. In contrast to St. Nicholas, who gives gifts, gifts to good children. That comes from Wikipedia. Here's another picture of Krampus and the Santa's elves. You can see uh, the picture on your right is that you have, it's almost like a witch's brew, uh, broom, where the children, uh, the naughty children, are being carried away by a Krampus, which is a combination of a human and a goat, okay? And you see this uh, all throughout uh, history is a human that's mixed with a goat. And I have a teaching on the Nephilim or the sons of God where I kind of go through this, but in a nutshell, on the, on the holiday called Yom Kippur in the Bible, where once a year the high priest went into the Holy of Holies to make a sacrifice, there were two goats that were offered. One was called the La Adonai goat, and that goat was offered to Yahweh, as, to Adonai. And the other goat was called the La Azazel goat, and that goat was taken off into the wilderness and it was pushed over a cliff. And the La Azazel goat was, was where they took the, the, the hands of the high priest and they would incorporate all the sins of Israel onto the head of this goat and then send it off into wilderness to Azazel. Now, Azazel was a man goat god, okay, in, in ancient mythology. And so it was said that it was Azazel who caused man to sin. And so all of the sins of mankind for that year, the Israelites, would be placed on the head of the Azazel goat. And this is what we see transferred all the way down into another form of Santa's helper is actually Azazel, if you will, or the Krampus is what they call it today. And the picture on the left you can see is actually a modern day picture of a festival, uh, a Christmas festival in Germany where they continue to use this celebration and they bring out Krampus or Santa's helpers. This is a modern day picture here. As crazy as this is uh, for us American Christians to believe that this still goes on today, this is a picture of St. Nicholas and his demons, his Krampus, are still celebrated in Austria, Hungary, Germany, Italy, and all over the world. And so what we're going to show you right now is an actual clip or a short movie of a montage of different videos that we've discovered of where they still make this celebration, still celebrate this all around the world, where they, they literally glorify the demonic part uh, of Christmas in St. Nicholas and these dark helpers. I know, I apologize, it just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? And if that wasn't enough, there are some scholars that believe that the actual song Jingle Bells came from the Krampus Bells that, that were in existence for a long time before that song was ever written, that every time you saw St. Nicholas, he was accompanied by the bells of Christmas, if you will, from his elves. They used to, to have bells that would hang from their necks and as you heard in the video, they would, uh, you, you would hear the bells as they announced themselves into the next town that they were going into. And some believe that that's actually where the term 
uh, the Christmas bells or the bells of Christmas or jingle bells came from. Now we're going to move into discovering exactly where Santa Claus came from. So Odin, how did Odin become Santa Claus? Well, here's the, the rendition or the evolution of Odin becoming Santa Claus. By the 1500s in Holland, there he became Sinterklaas. Okay, so St. Nicholas turned into Sinterklaas, a kind and wise old man with a white beard, white dress, red cloak, a crozier, and he r rode on the skies and the roofs of the houses on his white horse, accompanied by his blackjacks, which were the Krampus that we just saw, leaving gifts for people under his sacred tree, the fir tree. He would visit you on his birthday, December 25th, of course, and give you gifts if you've been good, or if you've been bad, his blackjacks would beat you. And uh, it, it's amazing to me that, that these stories find themselves in modern uh, Christmas traditions, even today, two and three thousand year old pagan traditions find themselves, and now we smile about these traditions. The most famous phrase that Santa Claus ever says is what? Oh, oh, oh. But do we ever stop for just a moment to think, where did that come from? Well, if you go back in history, you begin to find where that phrase actually originated from, and here's where it originated from. In the history of Hobgoblin, the author Alan W. Wright reveals Robin itself was a medieval nickname for the devil and Robin's trademark laugh is ho, ho, ho. Back in the 1600s, Robin Goodfellow played the devil in many, many plays, which plays obviously back then were incredibly important. They didn't have theaters or movies today. So the theater and, the, and plays were were an integral part of society back then. And so before the devil would ever come on stage, he would announce himself by saying, ho, ho, ho. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, where the ho, ho, ho comes from with Santa Claus. By the year 1700, a Dutchman immigrated to North America, brought his Santa Claus with him. The English dialect was then changed to Santa Claus. In 1930, a designer for the Coca-Cola company was trying to get people in the, in the wintertime to buy their drink. So they took their company colors of red and white, borrowed the Santa Claus story, changed a few things, and out came the modern Santa Claus, complete with reindeer and elves. So that 1930 designer borrowed a picture from, the, I think it was the 1800s, and modernized it, added the colors, and out came the Coca-Cola Coca-Cola Santa Claus that we see today, complete with the long white beard and chubby cheeks and the red and white suit. In the 1970s, let's continue. The Second Vatican Council, listen to this, formally stated that no Roman Catholic bishop by the name of Nicholas ever existed. They downgraded St. Nicholas. They took away his sainthood because there was evidence that brought forth to the Vatican that it was possible that he never even existed along with many other saints. Vatican II further confessed that the legends attributed to this saint had no Christian origin and probably came from pagan traditions itself, okay? And so we're seeing that St. Nicholas uh, most likely was a made-up saint that was connected to sun god or Odin that ended up being Odin. They needed to Christianize it, made a saint out of him, Eventually, the colors got changed. You see the elves come into the picture, and they go from being evil to little cute guys that make toys. That's all American modernization of a very satanic, evil, pagan holiday and origins that go all the way back to the garden itself and its deception. Look here, the World Book Encyclopedia says this, The belief that Santa enters the house through the chimney developed from an old Norse legend. The Norse believed that the goddess Hertha appeared in the fireplace and brought good luck to the home. That's actually where the word hearth comes from, is it comes from Hertha, uh, which was the goddess of the Norse. And so we see that right out of the World Book Encyclopedia, that Santa comes down the chimney, has nothing to do uh, with anything that is good, has everything to do with a god that came through fire. And ladies and gentlemen, I only know one god that goes through fire, and that is uh, Satan himself that will be eventually thrown into the lake of fire. Amen. Here we continue. Druid homeowners would leave a treat consisting of milk and pastries to appease this God that came down into their chimney into their fireplace. So there is where we get the idea of milk and cookies for Santa Claus. 
Um, we, we think we made that up. We think that's cute. But this goes back a long time, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Druids uh, when they would put milk and cookies for their God that came through the fireplace on December 25th on his birthday. So let's ask the question, who is who? Who's who in this world? Is it Santa Claus or is it Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah that we are serving? Which is uh, the God, if you will, that we are putting forth to our children during this time of year. Let's discover some characteristics that are eerily familiar to our Savior and see if we should be connecting them. First of all, Santa Claus is said to have no beginning or end. Jesus has no beginning or end. Santa Claus has his own eternal spirit called the Spirit of Christmas. Jesus has his own eternal spirit called the Spirit of the Living God. Santa Claus is all-knowing. Jesus is all-knowing. He writes their names in a book, checks it twice. So does Yeshua. He writes our names in the book of life. Santa Claus, his hair is white as snow. Revelation tells us that Jesus' hair is white as snow. Santa Claus travels during the night. Now you see a little bit of a difference. Jesus travels during the daytime. Everything that Jesus does is in the light. Everything that Santa does is in the dark. Do you see the difference? It's just subtle difference how Satan takes a truth and he just twists it just a little bit. Let's continue. Santa wants to give you everything your flesh desires. Jesus wants to give you everything that you need. Santa enters your house through fire. Certainly our Lord does not enter our house through fire. And he has a mystical tree, and he loves children. Did you know that Santa has a mystical tree? Where did he get that idea from? Because there is, in, in the Bible, there, Yahweh has a mystical tree called the tree of life. It was the tree that separated good and evil. That when you took part of the tree of life, you lived forever. And that tree of life eventually uh, took a, a form in the holy place that lit the entire holy place of the temple, and it was called the menorah. The menorah was the seven-branch candlestick uh, that the Israelites put in the temple, and it was called the tree of life. Let's go to the Oxford English Dictionary. It says, for the definition of devil, this is incredible. The definition of devil is called Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, and in popular rustic speech, devil is called Old Nick. That's right, Old Nick. The very Old Nick that we talk about, that, that we let our children sit on his lap at the department stores, that we watch movies revolving around Old Nick. Well, Old Nick, in the old days, this is what Old Nick used to look like. This is the Old Nick that that Hasatan, Satan, is used to, that's what the devil is called, is Old Nick. Again, it's not what it means to me. And I hope that you understand by now that it's not what it means to me. Uh, it doesn't matter what it means to me. It only matters what it means to him. These things are difficult to swallow. There's no question about it. When I first learned these things, they, were, they shocked me to my core. And then how do I deal with this? How do I apply this to my walk and my, and my spiritual life? We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but the truth is, is please humble yourself to the facts that are being presented to you today and ask the Father what you should do with your own family with these facts. And remember that it's not what it means to us. This is only what it matters to Him. So there you have it, everyone, the satanic origins of Satan Claus. Now, the reason I'm making these videos here is to have believers in Christ begin to crucify Christmas, to identify the ways that we are not being set apart in our lives, where we are following ancient pagan traditions that were a disgrace and an abomination before the Lord and getting rid of those things from our lives. So join me this year in crucifying Christmas and everything that goes along with it. And uh, check out my introductory video and stay tuned for more to come. Thanks so much for taking the time. This is the Vigilant Christian saying God bless each and every one of you. And as always, stay vigilant.